Welcome, 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 Lake Point family to Church Online. Hey, we are so glad that today you are joining us today. And right now we are live streaming from Rockwall, Texas here at Lake Point. And we're so happy that you're able to join us from wherever you are, whatever city, state, or country that you're joining us right now, from your living room, from your home, your neighborhood, maybe on your phone right now, maybe with family or friends, maybe on social media, on Facebook and YouTube or lakepoint.live. Hey, we're so excited that you're here. And right now, let me just say this, wherever you're joining from, would you take a moment right now and go ahead and drop it in the chat where you are joining from right now. I would love to give a couple shout outs right, right after in a couple minutes. So go ahead and start dropping those in the chat. Let us know where you're joining us from in this moment. And also Lake Point family throughout the service, let me remind you that as you join, we want you to be a participant, not a spectator. And so man, we wanna be a church online, not just a broadcast online. And so one way that you can join us, obviously as we go through the message, as we worship together, as we sing together, as we, we have a moment where we just express our desires and, and in prayers to God, and we want you to do that, not just alone or in isolation, but in community as well. And so one easy way to do this is, you know, if you go to the chat, and you have a prayer request, would you go ahead and just go ahead and drop it in the chat if you're on social media or YouTube. And if you are on our church online platform, go to on lakepoint.live, you can just click the prayer button that you'll find on your screen right now. Or maybe you're in your living room and you have a prayer request that you wanna share as well, you can just go ahead and grab your phone and text the word prayer to 20411 or go to lakepoint.church slash prayer and I'll say this I if you have something right now in your heart man, we have a team that is ready to pray with you to intercede with you and honestly as we worship together one way to worship God is honestly to just bring our dependence to him and say God I cannot do this on my own or this is what I'm wrestling with or this is what I'm anxious about and we just bring those to God through prayer and we want to do that not in isolation but together and so again we have a team that is ready to do that to so go ahead and and drop your prayer request in the chat or go ahead and reach out and somebody will be in touch with you. And also, this is the moment when we, I get to encourage you to go ahead and share this live stream, especially if you're on social media. This allows us and helps us kind of spread the word. And so you can just hit that share button on Facebook or if you're on lakepoint.live, you can copy paste the link and maybe grab your phone and text a friend, somebody that you'd love to invite, maybe somebody that is closest to you, but farthest from God and maybe the Holy Spirit and God is right now inviting you and motivating you to reach out to somebody that you love and invite them to join you for church online. And so right now I wanna give a couple shout outs and uh, I wanna give a shout out to Neil G from Louisiana. Also shout out to Barbara Seberen from Trinidad and Tobago. I hope I say your last name right. And uh, welcome international family. Also Michelle Thompson from Abilene, Texas. Hey, Lakewood family, we're so glad you're here. Keep on commenting. Let us know where you're joining from. We wanna to continue to hear from you throughout the service. And right now we are getting ready to start in just a couple minutes. So would you go ahead right now and would you posture your heart as we get ready to offer God everything we have in worship.
of our lungs because we know who he is. He is the God who gives second, third, fourth, fifth chances. His grace and mercy endures forever. And it's you, God, that we are desperate for today. We praise you. There's a promise spoken long ago Of a helper called the Holy Ghost And He's the essence of the Father and the Son As we begin this day To you, God There's a power when we call on our every day becomes an upper room So here and now we're making space for you to move Come on, let's unite our hearts with this prayer to have it say Holy
God And I I I'm desperate for you Come on, pray that, say And I Say that again. And I, I'm lost without you. Where would I be without your grace? I'm lost without you. I'm so lost without you. We're desperate for you. We're desperate for you, God. Got more of your presence, more of your power. For God, we know that your rod and your staff, they comfort and guide us. Our good, good shepherd, we trust in you. More of you, less of us. The Lord is my shepherd, and he's everything I need. So I will not worry. I will not fear the enemy He said that He loves me He said that He's with me Even though I walk through the valley Of shadow and death And still I know He has good things He has good things for me So I will take heart Deserts and gods, he has good things, he has good things for me. If I know my father, I know my father has good plans. Say the Lord.
joy it is to worship him together today. Welcome today to Lake Point. Hey, before you're seated, turn around, greet a few people around you, give a high five, say good to see you in church today. Well, hey, Lake Point family, welcome to Church Online. Hey, if we haven't met, my name is Carlos and I serve as pastor of Digital Ministries. And let me just take a moment and encourage you and challenge you this way. Did you know that there are two times in the Bible where Jesus tells us he's amazed? First one is a military high-ranking soldier who comes up to Jesus and says, Lord, my servant is sick. Would you heal him? But don't even bother coming to see him. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. Then the Bible says, because of his faith, Jesus was amazed. On the other hand, Jesus goes to his hometown and the Bible literally says Jesus couldn't do miracles because of their unbelief. In the first encounter, Jesus is amazed because of a bold faith. And in the other one, he's amazed because of a lack of faith. And hey, my prayer is today, as we gather as a church, your faith may be in bold. And I pray that that may be true, that today you and your family and we as a church can amaze Jesus with an audacious, bold, trusting faith that he can do so much more than what we can ask or imagine. And if that is you today, and if you agree with me, would you go ahead and say out loud at home, amen? Or just go ahead and drop an amen, amen in the chat right now. Lake Point family, if we haven't connected yet, we'd love to hear from you. Go ahead and drop a comment in the chat or reach out as well. When you can just go ahead and email us at onlinefam at lakepoint.church, we would love to hear from you. And right now, I'm excited because we're about to celebrate some baptisms happening in our church family. And what this is is simply an outward public proclamation of an inward transformation or change after someone has met Jesus. And that's why we love these so much. So let's check them out. Carolina, have you trusted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Yes. Then it's your son's privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. trusted Jesus as your Lord and Savior of your life. Yes, sir. Then it's my joy and privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Zach, Zach, have you trusted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. Then it's my joy to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. Lakewind family, would you please celebrate with us all those who have taken their step of faith to get baptized. Hey, go ahead and celebrate at home. You can cheer, clap, all the things at home, or go ahead and celebrate in the chat as well. Hey, as a church, we just do not wanna get tired of celebrating life change happening in our church family, and so we'll continue to celebrate these on and on and on. And hey, one of the things we've said before is if the church doesn't disciple people, the world will. And this is why we as a church, we wanna be intentional to not just disciple people during the weekends or only during a specific time of the week, but we wanna leverage all of our digital resources to disciple people basically 24 seven, Monday through Friday. And because we wanna do that, I wanna take a moment and say, Thank you for those of us that are partnering with us financially through your faithful giving in this season. And the reason that today we get to work on digital ministries that reach thousands of people as we speak through church online, through our social media platforms, and through our daily and weekly podcasts. And the reason we hear from hundreds and hundreds of people experiencing life changes because you give. So once again, Lake Point family, thank you for not being spiritual consumers, but being spiritual contributors. And so today, to give, you can do so in multiple ways. You can text the word GIVE to 20411, or you can visit lakepoint.church slash GIVE. Or if you're on our church online platform, you can just click the GIVE button that you'll find on your screen. And as you do so, 
If today you set up reoccurring giving to our general ministry fund and you mark church online as your campus, as a thank you gift, we wanna send you personally a physical copy of this devotional book, The Songs of Jesus, A Year of Daily Devotions in the Book of Psalms, written by Timothy and Kathy Keller. And if that is you today, we also would love to send you one of our exclusive church online family t-shirts as well. Lake Point family, let's continue to do this together and thank you, thank you, thank you for your generosity. Hey, right now, there is more happening in the life of our church and of course we do not want you to miss out, so let's get ready to check out LP News. Hey Lake Point, I'm so glad you're with us today. Let's take a look at what's coming up in the life of our church. We are so excited for hundreds of people to take their next step of faith during Baptism Weekend on April 27th and 28th. If you're ready to be baptized and let everyone know about the freedom you found in Jesus, this is the weekend for you. So visit lp.events for details and to sign up today. Lake Point is on a mission to change lives and you can be a part of it. Right now, over 30 kids in Mexico, Ghana, and India need sponsors. With just $30 a month, you can cover a child's school fees, supplies, uniforms, health care, and food. Imagine the difference you can make for just $1 a day. Ready to make an impact? Then visit lakepoint.church slash sponsor. This week on the Daily Drive podcast, we're welcoming special guest Levi Lusco. Tune in to hear what he says about choosing a godly mindset. Let's hear from Levi now. Hey, Lake Point Church. My name is Levi Lusco, and I'm really, truly thrilled to be joining you this week on the Daily Drive with Lake Point Church podcast. You can tune in each day, Monday through Friday, for each day's devotional. You can also listen on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or tune in, of course, on the Lake Point YouTube channel. I can't wait for our time together to open up scripture, to talk about Jesus. It's going to be amazing, and I hope to see you there. Listen every day this week, wherever you get your podcasts, starting April 15th. Now, let's dive in as we continue our I Need a Miracle series. What's up, everybody? Great to see you all. Thanks for being here today. Hey, I want to welcome all of our campuses, those of you that might be joining us online as well. My name is Mike, and I get the privilege of being on the team around this place. And, uh, you know, I've been coming increasingly uh, more uncomfortable here uh, because there are so many people showing up these days. It's a growing church, and it's real. It's, it's awesome. It's awesome. Don't, don't get me wrong, but I stand in a lobby and I hug people and I shake hands with people and I'm right up close with people. So I don't know where you people have been. I don't know what you brought into this place. I don't know what your family history of medical stuff is. I don't know any of that stuff. So I just decided I'm going to start taking some precautions. So you're just going to have to live with this. Okay. Now this is ridiculous, right? Right? Yeah. And this might be harder to get off than I, than I thought it was. But uh, I, now I am grateful uh, for those of you that have to wear things like this uh, because you're saving lives in an operating room or something like that, or you're doing the whole hazmat, uh, you know, hazmat thing. But for a guy like me to wear this would just be absolutely silly, you know? We may never, ever wear that type of thing outwardly. But man, we can keep our distance on the inside, can't we? And if we're not careful, you and I can start to develop the kind of heart that puts people into categories, the category of the untouchables. The untouchables. My, my son Derek is a worship leader. He's a creative arts guy. He owns his own construct, construction business these days. He's an awesome husband, awesome dad. Very, very funny guy, one of my best friends. And most people see Derek as a laid back man of few words. But when that guy was a little boy, he talked all the time to anybody and everybody. Anybody else got a kid like that? And you never knew what he was gonna say 
when he walked up to somebody. I can remember a time when he was riding on a school bus, like a first grader, and he comes home and tells us, there are these kids that sit on the bus next to me and they smell terrible. And Debbie goes, you don't say anything, do you? He goes, no, mom, I just sit there and hold my nose. <laughs> now, he's come a long way since then. And, and you know what? So have I. Because both of us have learned how Jesus moved among people. See, in Jesus' eyes, nobody was untouchable. I want, I want to show you a story today. It's probably in my top 10. Uh, last week, Josh unpacked the miracle of Jesus turning the water into wine in John chapter 2. It's such a great story. If you missed it, go back and check it out. This miracle is found in Luke chapter 5, the third book of the New Testament section of the Bible. If you've got a Bible, you can turn to that. If you've got an app you use, we'll put it on the screens as well. We all track along together. So you ready? Let's jump in together. Luke chapter 5. While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. Now, only in Luke's account is it this detail as covered with leprosy or full of leprosy. Luke was a doctor and he uses the medical term for a very advanced case of leprosy. When the man, the leper, saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Now, it's kind of cool up front that this guy acknowledges Jesus' authority. He calls him Lord right off the bat. He says, Lord, I believe you can do anything. Now, you may not heal me in the way I thought you would. You might not do it right away. But I know you could if you wanted to. Kind of reminds me how the founders of AA wrote in their experience. We found that God could and would if he were sought. We found that God could and would if he were sought. So many of us have found that to be true. And if that is true, which millions of addicts can attest, then isn't it also true that God can't and won't if he's not? This guy made the first move. He sought Jesus, saying, I really believe you could. I was just wondering if you would. Verse 13, Jesus reached out his hand and he touched the man. The word used here for touch is hapto, which means to fasten onto. So this is not some dramatic smack in the forehead, be healed kind of moment. This is not a big dramatic show with people falling backwards and the music crescendoing, just a tender embrace. It'd been so long since anybody had fastened onto him. So Jesus embraces him and says, I'm willing, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. What? You've probably seen those commercials for like, uh, I think it's plaque psoriasis, where he's got people in sleeveless blouses and a guy wearing a Speedo who shouldn't be wearing a Speedo. In fact, no one should be wearing a Speedo. And then the announcer says, many people taking Otesla found that their skin got noticeably clearer within six to 10 months. Let me read this again. And immediately, immediately the leprosy left him. Verse 14, then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anybody. But go, show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. You see, the people would know that this is a guy who had been a leper and they would be very, very slow to accept him back. But if the priest had inspected him and accepted his offering, it would validate this man in the eyes of the people. Plus, it would show that Jesus had respect for the law. And did you catch how Jesus instructs this guy? Don't tell anybody about this. Yeah, right. Verse 15, yet the news about Jesus spread all the more. Think the guy might have talked? So the crowds of people came to hear him and be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Now let's go back and unpack this just a little bit. I want, I want to look at this disease called leprosy in the first century. Now this, this wasn't acne, this wasn't eczema, it wasn't alopecia, it wasn't like poison ivy or even like psoriasis. Leprosy in the first century... The, the characteristics where there was lethargy and pain in all of your joints. There were discolored patches of skin all over your body, ulcerated sores on your face. There was a very, very intense smell. There was the ulcerating of your vocal cords and a loss of sensation in all your extremities. It was a terrible, horrible, contagious skin disease that eventually affected all your internal organs, your whole body. 
Dr. Paul Brand, who was a leading researcher on leprosy, died about 20 years ago, super compassionate Christian, brilliant guy who did research on leprosy treatment in underdeveloped parts of the world. He said the greatest damage that he witnessed from leprosy came from the loss of sensation. Now, I don't wanna be graphic here, but just so you know what we're dealing with. As these impoverished, homeless lepers would sleep, rats would come and gnaw off the end of a finger. And because they felt no sensation, they'd just sleep right through it. And leprosy was not just considered a physical disease, it also carried a moral stigma. Lepers were not just physically quarantined, they were spiritually quarantined. This disease was seen to be a curse from God that announced to the rest of the world that this person is unclean. Not just on the outside, but this person is unclean on the inside. And not only were they called unclean, they were instructed to shout those very words about themselves whenever they got close to crowds. But they seldom got close to crowds because they were quarantined in the colonies of like-inflicted people. When they received the news that leprosy had invaded their bodies, they were immediately taken out of their homes. They lost their spouse, they lost their kids, they lost their job, they lost their reputation, their position, they lost their hands, their face, eventually their lives. They carried a disease and a stigma that isolated them socially, physically, and spiritually. They were seen and they saw themselves as the worthless untouchables. Mother Teresa, like Dr. Brand, also worked with leprosy in the streets of Calcutta, India. And she once said this, we have drugs for people with diseases like leprosy, but the drugs do not treat the main problem, the disease of being unwanted. Feels awful to be seen as untouchable. If you've ever felt unwanted, you know how horrible that feels. It sucks the hope out of your life. And that's the way that lepers felt in Jesus' day. They were absolutely hopeless. Can you imagine what it's like to be strictly forced to shout unclean about yourself as you walk down the road so that people can avoid you? To walk through your life and see your former neighbors laughing and working, to hear your former buddies out there talking, to see your own children playing, and you no longer get to be a part of it. You're alive, but on the inside, man, you're dead. Sue Monk Kidd writes, it's anguish to come to that place in your life where you know all the words, but none of the music. And that's the way they must have felt. That's the way that guy felt. You wonder how long it had been since this man had experienced the touch of another person's hand on his hand. When was the last time he'd been hugged by a child? When was the last time he'd been kissed by his wife? When was the last time he'd had anybody fasten on to him? The religious leaders, the Pharisees, they taught that if you touched an unclean person, then you would be defiled. You would become just like them. You would be unclean. So people were to avoid all lepers and all lepers were to avoid all people, especially religious rabbis. In fact, a strict rule enforcing rabbi was the last person on earth that most lepers wanted to see. If they knew they even got close to a rabbi, they could get busted for breaking the law. And rabbis prided, prided themselves on being so holy, so close to God, that they were unapproachable to not only just lepers, but to any of the marginalized people of the day. And so the great irony is this, the only rabbi that a leper could approach was God himself. Jesus was the most approachable person who ever walked this planet. You know how Jesus hung out with prostitutes and tax collectors and little kids and brilliant scholars and lawyers and widows and uneducated fishermen. It didn't matter. Jesus was amazingly approachable and that reputation had followed him around. So this leper, he takes a risk and he approaches Jesus. He knows the law. He makes no attempt to touch Jesus, but he has seen something or heard something about this rabbi that made him at least comfortable enough to approach him. And this man feeling untouchable, unworthy, and unclean falls on his face in the dirt. And in spite of the law of the Pharisees, in spite of this man's contagious condition, in spite of the social implications, Mark's account adds this, filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I'm willing, be clean. And the leprosy immediately left him. Now what's cool to me is that Jesus knew that even before this man needed to be healed, 
this guy needed to be touched. I mean, think about it. Jesus could have done like drive through healings if he wanted to. He could have stayed in one isolated spot. May I take your order? Thank you. Please, please pull the next window. He could have set up a headquarters and just sent out, you know, like healing vibes over like a thousand mile radius. Or he could have done social media posts. Want to be healed? Click here. But Jesus knew. He knew the power of a touch. I love what Max Licato writes from the perspective of this leper. He writes this, I saw him. And before he spoke, I knew that he cared. Somehow I knew he hated this disease as much, no more than I hate it. My rage became trust. My anger became hope. From behind a rock, I watched him descend a hill. I waited until he was only paces from me. And then I stepped out. Unclean, someone shouted. I don't blame him. I was a huddled mass of death. But I scarcely heard them. I scarcely saw them. And their panic, well, I'd seen a thousand times. His compassion, however, I'd never beheld. Everyone stepped back except him. He stepped toward me. I said, Lord, you can heal me if you will. Had he healed me with a word, I would have been thrilled. Had he cured me with a prayer, I would have rejoiced. But he touched me. Imagine that, unworthy of the touch of a man, yet worthy of the touch of God. You do know that God wired us up to be touched. I mean, it's well documented that human beings need to experience touch. We all know that studies have shown that people who laugh a lot tend to live longer. And studies also show that people who experience meaningful touch on a regular basis have a longer life expectancy as well. My wife, Debbie, is a laugher. She laughs all the time. And she's a cuddler. If those stats are true, she's going to live to be like 186 years old. I heard about this really non-affectionate guy in, in, in Kentucky who was out with his wife on a, on a date. He was trying to rekindle a little romance. Well, she steps off a curb, coming out of a restaurant, and she broke her leg. So he calls 911 and says, hey, my wife just fell and broke her leg. We need an ambulance. Dispatcher said, where are you, sir? Eucalyptus Street. She said, could you spell that? He says, how, how come I, how, why don't I just drag her over to Oak Street and you pick her up there? Now, I'm convinced we can do better than that, right? And now, I'm not saying we all got to be like touchy-feely type people. But gang, everybody needs to be regularly touched in some way. Y'all, y'all ever go to those little, those little antique shops that got figurines and stuff all over the shelves? Those places drive me crazy. And Debbie and I went to a quaint little shop that had that, all those figurines everywhere. And when I go in a shop like that, I'm, I'm just being honest, something inside me snaps. I want to grab a baseball bat and just start swinging. I do. I don't, I got to get out of there. And there are signs everywhere. Don't touch, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch. I'm afraid if I brush up against them, you know, you break it, you bought it, right? Every day you and I brush up against people of incredible worth, people who are already broken. And God has attached a high price tag to everybody that reads, this person is worth the price of my son. And God goes around putting signs, please touch, please touch, please touch, please touch, please touch. I'm just telling you today, there's going to be somebody in your world that's waiting for somebody to touch them. Will you? Will you extend a hand? You'll put an arm around a shoulder, a warm embrace, an offer to help, or just an acknowledgement that they're there. John Orberg writes, he says, in a contagious world, we learn to keep our distance. If we get too close to those who are suffering, we might get infected with their pain. It may not be convenient or comfortable, but only when you get close enough to catch their hurt, will they be close enough to catch your love. Again, I love how this leper approached by faith. He said, I know, I know you can do this. I know you have the power. I just didn't know if you were that kind of God. And Jesus reached out and touched this guy, not only to heal him, but to announce to the whole world, God is that kind of God. He wants to be close. Psalm 34, I know has meant a lot to many of you. It says, the Lord is what? Close to the brokenhearted. And he rescues those who are crushed in spirit. And you know why God is so effective with the brokenhearted and the crushed in spirit? 
Because he's close. He is that kind of God. You know, Jesus did lots of miracles. John even says over in his gospel, he says, I don't have room to write down all the things I saw Jesus do. I mean, the amazing things that Jesus did, there wouldn't be a library big enough in the entire world to contain all the stories. And when Jesus did those miracles, he never did it to show off. He wasn't trying to build a big crowd. He wasn't trying to go viral. In fact, he even told this guy and other people at times, please just keep this quiet. Because he knew what could occur what tension and opposition could arise with the constantly scheming religious leaders. But he healed people, he touched people because he could and he wanted to. Now here's the whole deal though. He didn't choose to heal everybody. And healing their body was not the ultimate goal. If physical healing was the ultimate goal, then none of them that he did heal would have ever died. But they all eventually died. Even his buddy Lazarus, he died twice. Jesus' response to suffering people and to the untouchables was to provide an up-close and personal glimpse into the heart of God. I like what Philip Yancey writes. He says, by no means did Jesus eliminate all suffering. He healed only a few in one small patch of the globe. But he did answer the question of whether God cares. Regardless of how the world treats them, the poor and the sick have assurance because of Jesus that God knows no undesirables. There's hope for everyone. And what a feeling to know that you're wanted, that you're not undesirable, that you're not unwanted, you're not unclean, you are not untouchable. And man, when you experience that, it's hard to keep that quiet. You see, nobody ever, like never ever touched the leper. If you touched one, you got infected. But when Jesus touched this leper, he did not infect Jesus with his disease. Jesus infected him with his life and his hope and his joy. And as a result, this dude was really contagious now. You remember how Jesus told him, hey, uh, let's just keep this between you and me, okay? Let's just keep this under wraps. His ministry did not need any more tension, hassle, or crowds. But the guy could not stay quiet. It says over Mark's account, instead... He went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places. Yet the people still came to him from everywhere. I mean, come on. Can you blame the guy? How do you keep something like that under wraps? How do you keep that I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see? How do you keep that under wraps? Man, you just can't. Something like that happens to you, you want to explode with gratitude. Like we sang earlier, I won't be quiet. How can I keep it inside? And you know what the truth is? Lake Point is a growing church. And because, and the reason it is, is because you and I can't keep quiet about how the love of God is changing our lives. I'm telling you, you may be sitting in a row right now with a family that just a few years ago was absolutely falling apart, but they allowed God to get close and he touched them. You may be sitting really, really close to somebody who was adrift in a deep, deep sea of depression and grief, but God pulled them out. You may be a few seats away from someone who wrestled big time with alcoholism or drug addiction or an eating disorder, but like the leper, they said, Lord, I'm willing, you willing? And they found that God could and would if he were sought. And they started seeking his help and they got into a recovery group and he began to transform their life. Gang, you're in the same room with people who had a horrible reputation those with a wild sexual past, those who did prison time, those who never thought forgiveness was available for a person like them, but they found out they were dead wrong about the kind of God God is. And they felt the life-giving touch of Jesus Christ. You're in the same room right now with people who are terminally ill. In fact, all of us are terminal. But there are people who are experiencing right now another kind of healing this unexplainable peace and joy and strength to move through another day because the God who draws close to them has given them eternal hope that will not disappoint. And that's the greater miracle, I'm telling you. It's hard to keep something like that quiet. Once you get infected by Jesus' healing touch, you move through your school, you move through your workplace, your neighborhood, your own home with this contagious joy 
that just flows from a deep gratitude. I'm not talking about becoming some obnoxious religious person. Not even talking about necessarily being a highly verbal person. But rather moving through your world with kindness and integrity and this attractive peace and this healthy confidence and this humble heart full of compassion that just serves those around you. I mean, when God has changed your life, when Jesus has infected you, it's hard to keep it quiet. It's hard not to want to touch the world the way Jesus has touched you. I met Eddie after church one weekend, came with his brother asking for prayer. It was only his third time ever in a church, and he wasn't sure he believed any of it. His brother and sister-in-law had been inviting him for years, but he stiff-armed him every time. He's a pretty self-centered guy, chasing a lot of stuff and successful in the eyes of the world anyway, but something had changed in his life. He was uh, diagnosed with cancer and there wasn't much hope. So he finally relented and started coming with him and God started softening his heart. And after the service, he reluctantly sought me out to ask me to pray for him. And we stood there and talked for a little while. And we like immediately, we just hit it off. He felt like an old friend from the start. And I was able to tell him that Jesus was a healer. And even though he doesn't always choose to heal people physically, there's a deeper healing that Jesus can bring that nobody else can bring. In fact, I told him in my life, he, he healed me from an addiction to myself and to approval. And I, and I told him that Jesus had replaced my greed with gratitude and my envy with contentment that Jesus had replaced my anxiety with a peace that I can't even explain to people. And then we just kind of huddled up his brother and him and I, we, and we prayed together. And we stayed in contact. A few weeks later, his brother texted me and asked if the three of us could go to lunch. I said, sure. I still, I can see it in my mind's eye right now. Sitting around this round table at a restaurant, I'm sitting right across from Eddie. And he gets real choked up and he said, hey, I, I don't know how to even say this, man. Um, I went to the doctor this week and he said he'd never seen anything like it. My cancer is completely gone. And uh, so I can still remember looking across that table and the first thing that came out of my mouth, I don't know why I said it other than the Holy Spirit just put it in my heart. I went, man, what are you going to do with a gift like that? He went, uh, I, I don't know, man, you know. Well, he took those words to heart and he gave his life to Jesus. I got to baptize him. He was already a likable guy, but this dude turned into a love machine. He began to walk with humility, started asking forgiveness from people that he'd heard along the way, friends and family. He became good friends with his ex-wife and her new husband. He started being the kind of dad his girls had always needed. It was like that old Tim McGraw song, Live Like You Were Dying, except he wasn't skydiving and Rocky Mountain climbing and riding a bull named Fu Manchu. He, he began serving. He started giving himself away. He, he got so infected by the touch of Jesus that he became a super generous guy who helped a whole bunch of people. He was bringing coworkers and clients and his girls to church with him every single weekend. This guy was a light. Just short of a year later, the cancer came back, and this time with an aggressive vengeance. And he lasted only a month or so. And I can still remember standing at his bedside while he was out sleeping. I, I was guessing he could still hear me, could understand what I said. I told him I was so honored to know him and so proud of him. And the first dude I ever kissed on the forehead. And I told him, I said, man, I'll, I'll see you real soon. Days later, I got to do his funeral, or rather the celebration of life service, and it was incredible how many people were there. The chapel held about 1,500 people, and there were people standing along the side and all the way across the back, and people got up and told stories of the way that Eddie had touched their lives, and we cried, and we laughed, and we worshiped together. It was so moving, and he had his brother make DVD copies of a message I had preached that that really meant a lot to him and everybody there got one on their way out. But Eddie took that gift of healing as temporary as it was and let Jesus heal him in places that really, really matter. And he began to touch other people with the love of Jesus. Today, if you need healing of any kind, like anything going on in your life, we're gonna have some people down front, all of our campuses that would just love to pray with you 
Or you can text the word PRAY to 20411 and someone will get right back with you. We want to pray with you today. Jesus can touch you in ways that nobody else can. I had this quote from Ian Watson hanging over my desk in the office for a long, long time. It says, we live on a contaminated planet. It's contaminated on every level. It should have been quarantined from heaven. No reasonable God would go near it with a 10-foot pole. But Jesus is no reasonable God. He became a human being and took on your uncleanness and mine. And instead of the world infecting him, he infected the world. And with his immaculate infection, it's still spreading. And I just want to encourage all of us today, when we leave this place, or maybe even while we're still here, look around with new eyes. Look at people the way that Jesus looked at people. Be sensitive to the, the people that God puts in your path this week. And let's just continue to like take off the gloves and take off the safety glasses and let's touch this world with the love of Jesus Christ that brings healing. Father, thank you so much for the way you've healed so many lives in this place. Lord, I thank you personally for healing stuff in me that there is no medicine for it. There is no doctor's cure. I just needed a great physician to touch me in deep places, to meet me where my uncleanness resides. I'm so grateful. And a bunch of us here, God, are. So, Father, I pray that that realization, that gratitude would propel us to bring the same kind of touch to this world of people who need a touch from you. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mike, thank you for that. I know in the room today, there are many of you who are navigating a step as a result of that truth that you heard today. For some of you, that step is to put your, your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your savior for the first time. Maybe you've made that decision recently, but you haven't gone public in believer's baptism. We've got an amazing baptism weekend coming up in a couple weeks. Whatever that step of faith is, whether it's trusting in Jesus or going public with your faith through baptism, would you text us? Just simply text the word LIFE to the number 20411. When you do that, we wanna help you navigate that step of faith. And as a result of that message that you would walk in faith in Jesus Christ even more today, he has truly done great things. Hey, church family, it's a privilege of mine to just shed a little bit of light on how your faithfulness and generosity, not just in giving financially, but in your going is making a difference. Just recently, we sent a group of medical missionaries right here out of Lake Point to Guatemala to help meet, yes, the physical needs of over 200 patients. But even more than that, we were able to pray over, share Jesus Christ and the gospel and the good news with so many people affected with physical needs. And I believe we brought not just healing to those physical needs, but healing to their spiritual needs through Jesus Christ alone. And on behalf of those, I just wanna to say to you, thank you. Thank you for being a church who is so generous to see lives changed forever. No matter the cost, no matter what it takes, that's the kind of place we are. So thank you, church. And we're gonna to go to give today and model that generosity. And so to give today, there's two simple ways. Our ushers are gonna make their way down your row here in just a moment. You can give in the bucket, or the easiest and best way is to simply just text the word give to the number 20411. You'll receive a text back where you can give online digitally. And while you're there, would you set up recurring giving? This allows our leadership team the, the ability to plan intelligently as you schedule your giving so that when needs arise, we know how we can step in as a church to meet those needs. Let's do this all throughout this room. Would you stand to your feet today as we conclude our time together? We're just gonna go out praising God both as we give and as we sing. Come on, let's just sing to Him today as we praise.
joined us today. If you need someone to speak with or pray with, our teams will be down here at the front underneath both of these crosses. We love you guys, and we'll see you next weekend. What an amazing service. Lake Point family, thank you so much for joining us right now. Hey, I just, just want to remind you, if today you gave your life to Jesus throughout the service, now we have a team that is ready to engage and connect with you right now in the chat. And so, man, if that's you today, we would love to be there with you and for you. So would you go ahead and grab your phones right now and text the word LIFE to the number 20411. Or honestly, if you're just on social media, go ahead and drop your comment in the chat and we're going to have a team that is going to be connecting with you personally and follow up with you as we continue to walk with you in your faith journey. Also, if you have not yet connected with us yet, and maybe you've been joining us for a while, then we'd love to hear from you as well. Would you go ahead and grab your phone and text the word CONNECT to the number 20411 or you can go to lakepoint.church slash connect and would you share with us who you are, man, we wanna hear about you. If this is your first time, or maybe you've been attending for a while, but we have not yet connected, man, we have a team that is ready, as I, as I said, to engage and connect with you. And also, one more time, if there's a, a prayer request or something that we missed, or maybe just even after this, this service, there's something in your heart that you need to share and you wanna be pray, prayed for, or have a team pray with you, you can text the word prayer to the number 20411 or you, go to, you can go to lakepoint.church slash prayer. Well, hey, Lakepoint family, remember you were created to know God, find freedom, discover calling, and make a difference. Hey, we love you. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next time.